Association. This event enables us to honour the memory of, we call him Jersey's greatest architect, but he's actually from Yorkshire, um, greatest architect of the 20th century, in my opinion. These are all my views to begin with. Um, to, to, to do this, we've never done this before, but there's three of us presenting. Uh, Jeremy Spencer, here, Percival, <laughs> Jeremy Percival, who I've known for many years, won't show me. He's a policeman. will show key examples of Grayson's work from a quite encyclopedia collection of Grayson's work that Jeremy has collected. It's quite extraordinary. Unfortunately, I missed the one at Sushi Day, which is as uh, early in the year, but I'm, I'm as interested in seeing this as anybody else. I will then, we've got 20 minutes each, I will then talk about the international aspect of Grayson's work, which is important. And finally, Richard Lesseur, past AJ president, will summarise the life, <coughs> career, and work of Grayson local context. So, Jeremy, first. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is uh, Jeremy Person. Um, so I'm not an architect, um, but for the last five years I've been researching Arthur Grayson and his work in Jersey and to a lesser extent uh, in Somerset. Today, though, I am going to spend the next 20 minutes showing you some of the work carried out by Grayson during the 1930s. <coughs> so Grayson came to Jersey in 1929, having completed his studies at the Architectural <coughs> Association School in 1928, and then spending three months working for the architect Oliver Hill. He spent his first years in the island with Roy Bronquier, working on such projects as State's Officers Building and Overdale Isolation Hospital. But after two and a half years, though, Grayson decided to return to England and was persuaded to stay in the island by Tony Hewlin, the manager of a local building's material supplier, who asked him to design the first modernist house in Jersey. So, in early 1932, Grayson opened his own architectural office at Six York Chambers in York Street made Jersey his home on and off until 1952 when he moved to Somerset. It was those first eight years in business though that were undoubtedly the most productive of his career with the construction of some 49 houses and nine commercial properties. One of his first projects to be completed was the reconstruction in two phases of a new clubhouse at the Moy Golf Club after their original clubhouse had been heavily damaged by fire on the night of the 4th of February 1932. Wooden stud walls with a cement render were used for its construction and it survived until the occupation when it was demolished by the Germans. One of the first houses to be completed was a small flat-roofed three-bedroom house called The Mist on Mont Cochon from Miss Bessie Roberts. <coughs> It was finished on 9th of May 1933 for the sum of 1,143 pounds 10 shillings. And it had rendered concrete block walls with a two and a half inch cavity and included a corner staircase window, a small south facing sunroom above which was a balcony accessible from two of the bedrooms. <coughs> Unfortunately, I've been unable to trace any photographs of it other than this aerial view at the top right. 
because it was demolished in the 1980s to make way for the four houses that make up Clos de la Blaise, though the original gateposts can still be seen. Of course, Grayson is most well known for his modernist flat roofed houses, and he certainly designed a few. Sandhaze on Bonaire Lane is set back from the road to allow the west facing house to overlook the garden and provides a good example of how many of the flat roofed houses from the 1930s have changed over the years. In this case, it was actually Dick the Swerve who carried out the first editions in 1953. And Green Court is the only modernist house on this Grayson house to use brick as the main construction material, <coughs> but the upper story uses timber stud work and weatherboarding. Brayside and the neighbouring Sheringham on Levarine were both completed in 1934. Like Green Court and several other Grayson houses feature small tower rooms at the very top of the house. In the case of Brayside, it was the maid who was fortunate to have the room at the very top of the house with its fine views. And the tiling scene in the photograph here is actually a much later addition. And as you can see, the Sheringham has changed quite considerably since Derek took that photograph in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Rockville, above St Oban, was the first house to be built on the land that is now Montville Rock Estate. Though a large house with a contract price of £3,457, it only had three bedrooms. The rounded sunroom that you see in the photograph does not actually appear in the contract drawing, part of which is at the bottom there. It was actually added in 1936, no doubt to take in the magnificent views of St Oban's Bay. And as you can see, the house has since had many alterations with the pitch roof added and the sunroom actually demolished to make way for uh, <coughs> the rest of the extension. <clears throat> Some of the smaller modernist houses include High Tower, which, if you look carefully, can still be seen <coughs> part of Discovery Bay Apartments on St. Wons Bay. Sundown at the Pucker Lake, the Echelon on Beauport Estate, and a pair of houses at the foot of Mont Levin, Bill Nocky, and Villa. Villa. And Grayson also designed a number of modernist semi-detached houses around the island. The first was in 1933 with Malaya and Ignavard on Longville Road. 